Hi everyone, welcome back to the Jansen Art Studio. I'm David Jansen. I'm going to show you some of the quick um, techniques that I use for uh, small landscapes that's a little bit more casual than we did with some of the quick landscapes uh, in an earlier series, the DVD series. This book, this one will go with more of the book, the quick uh, landscape book that we're coming out with. A lot of plein air techniques, big brush, very casual techniques. Let's get right into it. I have a uh, 11 by 14 panel here that I've just done with the light gray, which is are white, a little bit of yellow oxide, a little bit of black. And it could be anything because none of this color is going to show when it's all said and done. And this is just a regular Super MDF 11 by 14 panel. I'll be using my Painted Simply colors out here, all made up to be global. The six colors of the Painted Simply, which is your cool red violet, naphtha red light, nice warm color. Your Hansa yellow, thalo blue, black and white. Then I add the colors of the, because this is part of the Art of Painting series, I add the um, the pine green into those colors. And I use a, a lot of the uh, the uh, burnt sienna and yellow oxide. And sometimes on some of them I've been adding the uh, diox purple, which uh, we might add a little bit today. That's where I get these real deep, cool colors. Um, and I'll show you some of those. I use those. I use that uh, quite a bit in into the books. Let's uh, let's get into this. I'm going to take my three quarter inch. I'm going to be using a three quarter inch brush. Um, I use a number five Liquitex knife. All of this is available uh, on our website. And but I have the larger knife. And then uh, I will use a variety, or sometimes a variety of flats, like a, a smaller flat, like a little number four or so to do trees and stuff like that, or four or six. And I'll, I'll show you that as we get going. There's a lot of different ways to do things. But we want to work a little bit quick, and um, and I want to show you some suggestive things to do. It's a little bit more fun to do. And try to get it done within just a couple hours. Let's... Let's get into this. Let's make a nice light sky blue. And skies, sky color can be really pretty. They Generally along the horizon line it gets really light and then it gets up into a little bit more blue color. And uh, you can take some, um, you know, blues, uh, like a thalo blue will give you a nice blue green. Adding a little bit of the violet color to that, or the red violet, takes you more to that ultramarine type color. And that's really nice into some sky. So, but varying it a little bit is, as well is nice. So we're just going to start out here, and I'm going to put this nice blue. And I try to do things. I don't want to do big, huge strokes. Um, I don't want a big stroke to show up, but I like to make a lot of smaller uh, little strokes. I remember once. One artist that I really enjoyed back into the 90s, watching her television show all the time, uh, she always said that any kind of stroke that you put onto the surface there should never be any longer than one inch. But, of course, as a stroke artist, we've done that. I do that all the time. But I always think about that. Every time I'm, I'm coming to the canvas, I've always, over all these years, I've always remembered that. Um, and that was Helen Van Wick saying that into her... her uh, into her paintings and stuff that she did. So I'm going to take that down. Now I'm going to add a little bit more variety up into the sky here. Let's get a little more like a, a, a blue. And uh, I'm just going to pounce a little bit of that up in through here. And I'm just going to let some of that just be, let some of that interest stay up there like that. And here's that, some of that purpley. We might take a little bit of that purpley color, a little bit more purpley blue here. So it's a little bit different. We might have a bit of that just stroked up in through there. And we're just going to give, this is a nice, it's a little painting here. Uh, it's just like you're doing a plain air. You're going to be setting up a light at the bottom and you're blue and you're finding all of this blue stuff going on in the sky, you know. So maybe you have some of that going on. And uh, we can take, um, we're going to have some water down here so we can take a little bit of that blue. This is all going to change, but uh, we can maybe take a little bit of that right down into here where we're going to have some water. Sometimes, depending on the, like in some of the lessons that I show in the book and stuff, some of those uh, you'll see me do it right away. Some of these you don't see me add the blue if it's a, if it's the, the water's coming, like in some of the paintings, the water is in shadow, a lot of shadow up into the front. So I don't add the blue until the, until the end. I make the water color with a lot of the trees and stuff is what you see. 
a lot of the reflections. And so we'll have some of that uh, going on here too, but I'll just drop some of that in here. So right about in here, I don't like to go like halfway. Uh, maybe I'll put just a little bit more into the sky, but just so right about in here somewhere is where my, my sky is going to be. And I might make a softer gray, maybe a warmer kind of gray. Take a little bit of your burnt sienna into that uh, blue there and it'll just gray that out here. You can add blacks and stuff, but blacks are kind of dead color, and I like the warmth that comes from like a burnt sienna into that. And let's just make a nice, soft, lighter, kind of gray, warm color tone here that can go right across the, the edge of our, our horizon line here. And right up into the sky a bit just model that right up in right up into there like that we'll drag a little bit of that down into there but that puts just a nice little warm movement down into there maybe you have uh maybe we have some opening there we want some clouds now i've done a lot there with the brush many times i'll do uh stuff also with the knife here and so you know maybe we want to add just a idea just slight very flat with a knife like this and if you have enough paint on the surface you get this real wispy kind of cloud going across there just like that maybe you'll have that and it comes down like this here maybe there's just another little line of that right in there like that nice wispy uh, cloud let's just wipe our brush here just a second and pull through that and that'll just blur that and set that in there like that. And that just looks wonderful out there like that, just real quick. And, you know, let's put one right up here like that. Just a little wispy one right there. Just right in there. Now just blur that out. And see, you got that. Leave those little sparks of color there. That just looks like, um, you know, that just looks like little wisp. It's like blowing in the wind or something like that. Those are nice to have. You can put uh, a few of those right along the edge of your of your uh, your line your soft line down there if you want and it'll be smaller and longer and more linear here and linear means that they're you know more I use my brush like this and that will give you more depth perspective through it so they'd be smaller you you'd imagine smaller clouds back here if this was a horizon line or something like that there and that would that will make them look smaller going through there. Okay, so you can see right there that you can set something up like that just really quick as long as you have enough paint on the surface and as long as you do it powerful and you, you know you just let what happens happens. Your cloud when you first do it, I can never repeat that cloud again. Um, you know, and it's going to take some practice and some you know, get yourself a couple boards, put out some of that color and try it and try it and try it until you get that confidence of boom, there's that cloud in there and it'll go out there. OK, so let's just whisper a little bit of that grayness tone right up in there as well. OK, so that sets that in there. Now, let's set uh, what we're going to have is a, a, a line of uh, trees and stuff back here. So maybe that's going to come back up over here. So let's take some of our greens. Now I'm not going to make the trees specific yet. Let's tone this with a little bit of our of our pine green. And uh, let's put a little bit of our sky color into that so that it softens that out. And we're going to have this river come, we're going to have this river come from this area of trees and stuff like that. So maybe these little trees will be right back here. We're just going to push up a bit and create some uh, variation here. Here, up, and we'll maybe have one or two bigger ones. We'll have some pine trees and some other types of trees in there. And these will uh, push up like this. And of course, some of these we're going to go, go kind of go away. I'm just using my the, the flat of my brush here and um, just pushing up some color. These aren't just, you know, this is the first initial shape of these. And we'll just push, we'll cover most of this up with a hill, maybe some other trees. Because I don't like trees, just a band of trees going right across the top of it here. Now, let's just pinch wipe our brush. And again, let's just drag through that for just a second. And th what this does is this will pay, put in the, the soft receded edge of those trees and stuff here. And 
that's one way of doing it. Another way is I take a small brush and move the, the tree in there into that wet color and, and it sets that in that way. But you can see right there that sets those, uh, that blurs that. I don't blend it, I blur it. And when you blur something, you set it further back, okay? So that sets those a little bit further back. And we can uh, come in we can put some uh, more trees here. So the, the big thing is, you know, there's just a lot of ways in which you can do something. The big thing is that objects that are way into the back there have got to get those blurry edges there like that. Now we're going to come in and add more to those, but you start out with that blurry edge. And the more edge you bring, the, more, the closer that that becomes. Now I want to vary this a bit, and you'll see in some of the paintings that I do, in the book, I I put a lot of colors in with a smaller brush. I'll work colors. I'll put, you know, all kinds of, you know, greens and all kinds of stuff going in. And sometimes I'll come back just in one area and push in more burnt sienna in one area, more of a yellow green. And that's, that's perfect. That's what you get inside of trees. You're not just one band of one color, you know. Um, Pushing in some purples and stuff like that would be nice uh, into here, or some blues or something. We have this lovely purpley color. We can grab some of that with some of our greens here. That'll be nice and cool, just dirty with just a touch of that burnt sienna, and push some of those in. It's a deeper color. It's a little different color, um, which is uh, which will work really nice for us. But um, I don't want to get uh, too far ahead here yet. We've still got to a lot to, to put in, but I'm just looking for some modulation, or what I call modulation, or movement of the colors back in through there. And so sometimes I'll use a smaller brush and do a lot. Um, I'm going to come in and, and set in some of the trees, some of the look of the trees and stuff that they have, and some of the back areas back here. I'm going to take and I'm just going to soften out some of my color here, gray it out, soften it out just a bit here. And we'll add some yellow oxide here. We'll get some burnt sienna, some of our greens, maybe a touch of that purples into there. I'll model all of that up. And let's just come in and, and just set in. And I'll, I use the flat of the brush, very flat like this. And this is what I use to shape trees. Uh, sometimes I'll use, you know, like I did the big brush there and push that around. But sometimes I use like this. And I'll start to um, start to look at the canopies of the trees. How round is this tree going to be up here? Uh, try to have some uh, lost edges to it, some heavier color to the to the front side of it. There. Sometimes I tap it with my finger to uh, give some lost uh, edges into it, and uh, push some other colors down here down like that so we'll get some and I don't like to just like go boom boom so I like to um, you know have some undulation to it here so just I just don't want it to go boom boom like that so I we'll have some variation here change up the color a little bit and let's just drag that through this will probably be covered up here on this side so we won't go too far back there like that um, Let's get a little more of a nice yellowy and some burnt sienna into that. Change that tone. That's that's the other thing that really makes your trees beautiful is they cha you change these tones every once in a while through so you don't always get just this same tone coming through. You know, you have some of that tone. Let's get a little bit of green into that. Just a bit of that greenish tone coming in there here. Boom, there's a tree right up there like that. There, right into that tone there. So you have some yellow tones, some of those other tones, little little strikes of tone here. Change those tones up a bit. Model, this is where, uh, on some of the, the paintings I did in the book itself, I spent a lot of time just doing this into the trees just changing up some of the tones, looking for lights and warms and yellows, uh, yellow-green tones, you know, into some things. 
some areas there, nice little yellow green. If I have a big area of yellow, I'll break it up with some yellow green there like that. So you see those tones kind of change. Sometimes I use the edge of my brush like this and I'll I'll drop in some uh, uh, like little stand, uh, like tree trunks and stuff like that. Sometimes I do them dark, sometimes I do them light um, and add a few other little you know lines sometimes just kind of dragging through that uh, color like that. You know, we have a long ways to go, but there's that's all stuff that you build. Let's build some more pine green and and, and uh, burnt sienna and stuff, and we'll come right up through here. What I want to do is put some of my darker colors up front so I can start seeing just how much I can do into the back back here. So uh, I'll get some of these darker tones. Let's get a little purple into that as well. Burnt sienna and purple is very nice dark tones. As this is going to come right up into here, right up into these areas up here, this is where your, your real darks are going to go. As a matter of fact, let's not play around with that little brush. Let's get our quick painting stuff out here. We're going to have some deep tones out here. Boom. Get brave. Here. And this is this. Let's get a little bit of green into that. Change that up a bit. Move it through and see. I'll move my brush in all different kinds of positions here. And I'm going to drag some of this right down into where it's going to be my water. And I'll move the two together here. Right down in because I'm going to have this side of the in shadow and this side of the painting over here in light. Here. And we'll tap this through. We'll imagine this little plane of land coming through like that. And we'll work this through up and down like this. And through. So you see, I just used the corner of this brush. See how the corner just works so well with that. Let's just grab that and there like that. So I'm just quickly cat trying to capture. The, the light, cool area and something that's going to recede back up over here onto this side. Let's um, get over here and get some of the, the yellow oxide and some of that um, burnt sienna and some pine green here. A little bit of pine green into that. Grab this nice deeper tone here. We're going to have like a, a hillside and the water is going to come right back here again. Here. Right back up over there like this. And uh, maybe that's going to come in just like that. Down and through here. This little river is going to run right through there like that. There. <clears throat> okay. So that sets that. And we'll break some of that up here with some yellows. Just going to start to break some of that that tone up here right now. Real thick little paint. Just break it up here. And let's cast a little bit of that. Maybe a bit more purple. A little cool it down just a bit. Let's cast some of that right down in here. This will be your water down here. Okay, so we'll cast this right down in there like that. Okay, so... Let's get a uh, bit more or burnt sienna and a bit more purple. That'll cool that off just a bit here. And like that. Maybe a bit of our blue from our sky in there as well. And that'll just cool this all off. We'll work those colors. You know, just pull some of these colors down like that to that cool area. But then restate that cool here. There we go. Let's carry a little bit of that cool over here. There we go, like that. That's good. Through there, this will be that hill. It'll come right down. Nice cool. Right in there. So, we'll have some additional. Now, the other thing to do is um, you know, if you use your knife, I use my knife a lot to pull some of these down like this. And we can use that for 
maybe some of our, our, our lighter colors and stuff later here. I'll pull that down like that. Now, that's got a bit of, a bit of color on there, so i got to let that burn off and tone, uh, kind of tighten up just a bit here. So we'll let that tighten up a bit, and I'll go paint some uh, trees here. Let's set in some tree shapes here. Okay, um, let's do some um, nice, uh, we'll use our tones here. We'll get some burnt sienna, some greens and stuff here. Using just a corner of our brush here, let's come in and just set in some idea of what these trees are. Now, these trees that are here are going to be on this bank, so they're going to be closer, which means when they're closer, which means um, I'm going to, you're visually going to uh, see more colors and more edges and stuff here. So we want to uh, pop these in a little bit uh, more. Here, let's just change that green up a bit here. Right down, down into here. These will come right down into here. This tree will come down full right down into here. And quite a few trees. We're going to do quite a few trees. The area. And so i got to leave what, what, what we call sky holes. Openings into the sky. Let's get just a bit of that purple in that. Get a little different green here. Down. Cool color down into here. We'll get some of those trees in there. And we'll put a few little touches of this for some of the greener areas. We'll let this big trees come in here. Boom, like that. Coming right in there like that. And uh, change the color up a bit. Lighten that color up a bit. Change the tone. Get some of those, let some of it go a little airy. Some of those yellows in there. Change that tone up a bit. Use just a little corner of the brush to make some of those little touches. Let's put another little tree back here. Maybe it's right back here. Okay, we'll kind of move those together a bit. Got a lot to do on that tree, but it's starting to come. I want to get those nice, that nice paint right up here. And see, that's that paint that brings this tree up in front of that other one there. It's that nice thick paint here. It's those thick paint and those edges, see? We get these edges here. And that thick paint and that color and that contrast here and those edges just bring this tree right up in front of those others, sends the others to the back, back there. Okay, so we'll uh, extend this peninsula line here a bit. Let's extend this back just a bit so we'll make that look like a little river that comes back through there. We'll soften these out just a touch more. And let's put just a few more little trees here. Maybe these are intermediate ones. Not quite, not, not back, uh, you know, all the way to the back. And we'll wrap that little river right around the corner there. So this little tree is not quite all the way around that corner there. And this one is more into the front, so it'll get just a bit more color and stuff to it. You could also add, you know, more lights and darks, but you know, if you leave like little sky holes through it and stuff, that that gets a lot of interest to the tree. So we'll just tap. So I use the big brush. Now a lot of times I use a small brush. I'll use a small brush here in just a bit, but uh, the big brush here just puts in what I need to do with this tree. Here. And I'm looking for variation of my colors more than anything else. Here. So just use the corner of this big brush. 
get some of this heavy color out here get a little purple into it every once in a while get that cool color here right in there okay so I'll set that up and we'll take just a bit of that whoa I hit some white there push a bit of that right out there into this tree give it some other little branches in and out so I'm going up a bit here. Maybe a bit of burnt sienna and some yellow touches here onto that as well. The color variation is also very important to your to your paintings. Now we can also blur that just a touch here and there, just ever so lightly because it is a little further back. So this we can, just a few edges of it, just a few edges back. There, like that. And <clears throat> now we'll take some of our yellows, nice thick yellows and burnt siennas and those greens and stuff here. Let's grab some thicker white here as well. We'll model that together and let's just set up the idea of our our edge of our shore here just pulling now the angle at which you pull sets the the whole feeling of it here so let's just give this just a gentle slope here just a gentle slope here like that got a big old dollop of white which I put on my hands here that's good so we'll just pull back like that and give it a little gentle slope to that. Yeah, we'll cover this back here with some more trees, but I'll just put an idea of that slope in there like that. Idea of that ground line in there. I like it undulating back and forth a bit. Let's put a little idea of that line, that ground line, back in here. And just, so just slide it sideways here with your knife, very flat. And I go back to the very back, back there, I, I lift the knife up to I'm using just a little razor edge of it. And I'll hit it every once in a while. There we go. So you can see here, or that uh, just a little, you know, some of the initial setup there of this is going pretty nice. Let's get some of our greens and those colors. Let's get them down into our water here. So I want to, I want to paint this kind of blurry back and forth right now. Um, you know, I used to give start out the water. Uh, you know, years ago, I used to start out the water more precise. Now I start the water out very blurry and uh, uh, very blurry to the land. And then I'll come in and, and, you know, distinguish it up. But what happens is you start to pull some of those, those, um, those, uh, those colors from the land right into the water. And you get your reflections painted pretty quickly. So let's push that color there. Let's push a little bit of that color out into here. And we'll use that as well into the water. Just a touch of that here. Vary that color up a bit. And when I paint the water, so I end up I end up pulling a lot of those colors down like this and through the water several times. So I get this nice um, you know modeling of the water like that. That's where you get a lot of your interest, you know, back and forth like that. So now we'll we'll come back and, and work this. We're not done with any of those trees or any of that kind of stuff, but you know we'll work that again here in that area. And uh, let's just push a little bit more here. Maybe that's coming right there like that. Okay, so and you know I might want to have a pine tree or so in there. I love pine trees. So let's, pine trees, I, I 
I do all different kinds of ways, and I'll put a soft one back there, and I do that, I'll just use the corner of my brush here, and I'll make it maybe a little bit taller than the others, and I just use the corner, and I go side to side like this, a little bit bigger, smaller there, and uh, I'll get a couple of them out here to some different sizes here, just side to side like that. And uh, sometimes I'll use the flat of the brush across and pull to get some different here. I'm going to get this nice to fill it up fuller with that. We'll get a little more sky color into this. Maybe just put a impression of some back here. Back in here, back up. The thing is, is, is try not to be rhythmic about it. Try to be varied about it. You know, I, I tend to, I'm very much a left brain painter, and if I'm not careful, I'll put one, 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 and line them all up. So that's something that I'm always uh, watching against here is that I'm not doing that kind of thing. And so we'll, we'll just build it with a little more color coming forward here, like that. And we'll put a little more color here, coming forward. So I like the pine trees, and, and I usually add them, you know, after some of the others. I start some of those and as I come forward I give them more color, more darks, more color, more, you know, try to leave a few little air spaces and stuff like that. But uh, I do like pine trees and I'll probably put some back up in here as well. Now and likewise, um, you know, with all your trees, you can scrape through here again and get those tree branches in, and then you can just take them out every once in a while with some of your wet color in your finger here. But they're great, um, you know, scrape through just like this. That sets up, and then you can go put in highlights and, and shadows and other little things and, and uh, other colors into them as well. But this will just break up some and get some of those colors going you know and you can pull across and break and and that will set some branches and stuff up in front of it and will sink it into the tree and then you can come back in and add some like light yellows uh, yellow colors you know strikes to it every once in a while especially on a forward tree here like this you know some other colors into that browns and, and stuff and uh, set that in and that will help your uh, set your tree in so all different kinds of ways let's get some her mottled greens up here again and a nice pine tree a little darker some burnt sienna and some pine green a little yellow here and um Let's set a larger one. Kind of set that, just use the chisel of your brush here. You should probably see that. Use the chisel of your brush here and just kind of pull down like that. Then I'll go over onto the corner, just tap a little, and then just slowly tap a little while, and longer and longer, and try to sometimes you know pine trees bend down you know the branches get very heavy they bend down usually up by the top the younger branches they usually go up slightly but not all there's different kinds of trees different kinds of pines and douglas firs and so i just like to paint a variety of the branches and stuff and get a little heavier down. Sometimes I'll bend them down a bit. There's I get and add a few more little colors, especially up here into the center. You can add 
you know, lights and highlights and stuff. I don't think I'll do that on this one because I'm getting a pretty nice, quick, little mottled look to this painting just with these colors here. And I'm just thinking that the, you're always thinking the darker colors are advancing, the lighter colors are receding. That's what you're doing. Here with this. So, and you know, by constantly playing these colors here, you can see that the colors in that tree are changing. See? So the colors here in this tree are changing and bigger here. And casual here. That's nice. And that'll put that light right out there. And I'll just take a little bit of those colors right down in here into the water. Right down here. So the water's carrying some of the colors of those trees there. And let's get some of those yellows and that burnt sienna in here. A little different color. And let's just sprinkle another little tree in there. Different type of tree. Let's just sprinkle that one in there. And you can give it a little tree trunk there and some lines and stuff from it. Use those, use that color to sink it in. Let's get some darker tone. Remember, it all plays against dark tones. Let's get some darker, bushier tones right up here into the front. Just a few touches of that. Let that slowly disappear as it goes back, back here. That sets the shoreline there. And you want to set some variation in. So some, you know, in and out. Because these trees just aren't into a line. They're in and out. So by taking some of the shadow up a little higher in a few places and, and lower in others, you create this undulation, this in and out. So we want to make sure we get some of that. Soften those edges back there just a bit. Let that go further back. Like that. Take some of this ground. You could use your knife or you can just pull. I like to uh, sometimes just pull with the flat like this. Just down like that. And remember that pull it at a slight angle there and that sets the shoreline there. And let's just grab a little bit more mottled light color here. There, like that. Some of that. And you can paint out some of that. Just paint out with some of that dark. And that still keeps that angle of the shore. Just lift off like that. But get little light edges of it back through there. It's going to go right around that corner, but try not to have it just in a line, you know. You want stuff to, to vary and, and uh, change, and and that's what gives it interest. So just try to have that going back to the back like that. Let's model up some of that, get some of that light in here, like that. All that together. Let's just pull that right onto the shoreline here. And we'll let that just go right around the corner there. That's where that water is going to be. Right around that corner. Sometimes I just grab a big old part of it like this. Big old bunch of that. And just kind of move that through. And it just does such a great job at setting the... the the line of the of the, uh, the ground just kind of sets that interest in there. Just model all of this together. Don't mix it. Just model it together and drag that. See, I try not to do 
any mixing because the mixing will kill your 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 painting it makes it too much the same and you can use like there that's a little bit the same there so I'll just take a little bit of burnt sienna and green and some of the dark and take out and lift the brush over wipe the brush go back and just take out every once in a while like this see and it puts those other colors in there here we go now I got to to help see all that we've got to get some of our water colors and stuff in there some of our nice back sky color here, which is some of our blues and our whites. Maybe even a bit of that violet in there, get that blue in there. It's toned. We want just a bit of that with the dragging uh, of, of that. Um, get it a little bit lighter. But we're going to want some of that uh, kind of grayed color here as well. Push that all together, get that grayed kind of color, and pull that right through there like that. There, that sets some of that back water back there. I like how um, uh, Lewis Ashton Knight always put those back lights against that back of that water, which you know, shows that reflection of the as your as your angle of your eye changes against the water. You know, when it's down lower like this and the water's out flat, you get the reflection off the sun because of the angle of the light. As it comes up next to you, like I've said all this in my rocks and water videos, it comes up next to you, your angle's down like here, you don't see it. You'll see the water is dark and dark and clear. But here, back here like this, you're going to pick up the light little bits of the light coming back here so we'll pick up a bit of that here and then we'll come up and just drag some of this lightly over the over that that blue and that light just lightly drag some of this sometimes I use a bigger brush too all depends on my on you know what I'm what I'm going for, but I'll take some of this light color. Have all this lovely light sky, but I want to model it up so it's not perfect light, and just grab this and pull some of this across like that. That gives the it gets a little bit of that fracturing of the color here, and just go boom like this. Now if you get too much. There, just take a little dark color, a little shoreline color, and just paint out every once in a while. There, and paint out. See how that sets that in. There. Okay, so as I come up forward here, I'm going to want this more through, more of the light of that sky coming down here, like this, and through. Dragging through like that. Okay, we can get more of that sky, just get more of that violet color of that sky into that back down in here. Pull down, sometimes pull down, then pull across. It just gives nice movement to it. Here, there we go. Let's push some right out here. And it's just going to it's just going to model in with some of that other watery colors there and stuff and um, and you know all work. Let's get some and but I want to make sure that I preserve some of that pine green and burnt sienna colors that are right in through here. I want to preserve some of that into that water. So I'll just paint back into that, pull through. But paint some of those colors back in. You can paint these colors back and forth. That's what's creating the beautiful water. I used to think, okay, once I put that light on top, I can never go back. And now I now I do. Now I know how to really paint water. Now I do. I go back and forth and back and forth. You know, that's... The big thing is, is keep the, the tonal differences and stuff into that. So see, I'll pull that right back in like that. Work that through. 
soften any bit of that that look that I want there. There we go. Work some of that through. Let's just pull down some of this color here. And just work that through. So it puts that color into the water. There, like that. Okay. And let's put that lighter. That sky is still a little bit more ultramarine there. Yeah, so we want a bit of that. Boom, right in there like that. There's the sky right into my water. Pull that right across. Boom, like that. And uh, so sometimes I would leave it very much pulled across like this and add rocks, you know, and some of them, the ones I'll add rocks and little stuff going on into the streams and stuff which you'll see in the in the book and um, if you have any kinds of extra problems or anything like that with with those uh, I have that whole series on rocks and water and I highly recommend it where that's all I'm painting is rocks and water I'm showing you that so now you see the light is coming down through here here you're going to pick up the reflections of the the shoreline and stuff and and um, so everything is going to change a bit on it but we want this light water here through there like that But you, every once in a while, you, you know, it, it all depends. You can do a lot of horizontal movements, but I like to pull down too, which calms the water. The pull down calms the water. Side to side gives it some action, some movement. Pulling down calms it down a bit. Um, once I do that, then I'll take some of my lighter color here. And um, with this brush here, and we'll use it. Now, sometimes I use the knife too for this. I'll show both. But I'll just do it flat like that. And just lightly put the shimmers or the shimmering in here on the water like that here. And that just gives a little bit of that extra movement there to some of that water. Now, if you get too much, just load your brush with some of the blue there like this and take some of it out. Just manipulate your brush like this. You could use the, you could also use the, you know, the pine greens and burnt sienna and stuff like that. And that takes some of it out. So I also use my knife, and I do this a lot, is I just drag my knife across like this, just like making that cloud there. And see, that just adds a nice movement there to uh, some of that water here like this. And then I'll manipulate it like in here is not real great, so I'll just manipulate that right into the spot, right into place there with uh, my brush going back and forth. And setting some of that movement there. And that's what sets that. It's it's a nice movement because it's not uh, contrived. It's very casual there to see that movement like that coming down and through. So it's, it's uh, very casual. And it's a nice movement for it. So the combination of the knife and the the brush does that very very well so you would have maybe a touch of that right over here like that coming right in here a little bit of that and then just take some of that out see how you can and I that's why I have paper I mean I have a towel here because sometimes I just go like that and just lightly take a few little touches of that out and let that water just hit like it's just got a little bit of an edge there now as we come on to these, here, we'll, let's put on a little bit more of our edge. Like this is going to be our water's edge right here. 
real light front modeled here. So when you paint with these fusion brushes like this, you know, and a lot of my students say, well, say, oh, I worn mine out. No, you never really wear a brush out. This one is so old, and I love it when it gets old because it does this kind of stuff really great. So if you don't, if it's not good enough to do, it's all frayed out and it can't do strokes or anything like that anymore, don't. Save it for landscapes because the older brushes make the best landscape painting brushes. Don't ever, ever throw away your fusion brush. Save them because there's always stuff and, and, you know, I'm always, I'm always using mine, you know, so... I don't, I've never thrown, I have yet to really throw one away. Because I use it for all different kinds of stuff. So let's set up some, we can set up some bushes and stuff like that. But I can set up some nice ground like this as well, right in here. And I want to set some of this uh, tree here. Get my pine greens and my yellows and a little bit of that. Some of this tree right up in front of this. That uh, trunk there. And uh, let's get some of our purple and some burnt sienna and some green. And we put that dark over on the uh, other side. We have to put some darks over here as well. These become very important. As a matter of fact, we're going to make them, try to make them just a little bit darker over here because this is what will really bring the, the painting, these objects forward here. Here, like that. Some of that in there. Change some of this up a bit. These are it's a little bit. I want to push this. This is a bit too much land here, so I'm going to push that a little bit flatter. Take a little bit of my sky color here. Let's just lift that right out. Let's just lift this one right out. And lift that right out. Now we can leave a little bit of that. That. Uh, Leave a little bit of that uh, sky and uh, that yellow from that, because that's just that's just colors around. It just looks like reflections. But let's just pull this down a bit, and that will make that like a little reflection there, a little cove of re reflection. Pull some of that out. There we go. Now we'll just take some of our light, cut right across there, and see that makes the shoreline there. Drop that in. Drop some of that light in. Maybe see just a bit of it over here. Onto that edge, or maybe there's a bush or something that takes that out there. Extra little tree here, different color greens. Well, maybe takes that out so you get a better depth perspective. So the planes cross each other there a bit. There we go. Get some more of that yellow, burnt sienna. So you can see right away you get some nice depths to it, you know, and pretty quick. You know, we're only in, not even an hour into the painting. And you can pretty quickly grab and get some uh, some nice uh, depths to your painting here. Just by watching your edges and watching your colors and your tones here, right? And... Putting some of those into the back and here. We'll uh, 
Just tap. As we start to, as I start to like, you know, finalize some stuff and everything, I'd like to get very, uh, uh, I'd like to have the brush just not perfect at all and create all kinds of different colors and strikes and, and stuff. So, and if I need to take something out, I can just lightly touch and take out. But I want to look for variations of, of you know, and, and interest, and so all kinds of variation here, though. You know, maybe some of that blue comes right up against that water's edge there. Those two are just kind of finding each other there. You know, a lot of times we put light and stuff against the water's edge, but that doesn't always happen. Sometimes you're just going to have some darks there, too, as a shadow. And this is where I start to, some of the little detailing of that, some pine green and some purple and some burnt sienna here. Start to find some contrast here. So sometimes it's light, sometimes it's dark, you know. Sometimes you have a nice little blue cast right there. Here's through the water. Boom. And pick up some of that tree there, that purpley cast of that tree. Just a touch of that here. Do that. So you pick up some of those colors and stuff that you cast there. Just cast those into that water. There like that. That gets you a reflection. There's a little bit of that purple right up in here. Let's make sure we cast that into that water there as well. I see that. And then that that makes it look more like water. So as you're starting to bring some of these this stuff together, you gotta start looking for that. So, you know, some of these other warmer tones I have out through here, little touches of them here and there. Like I might want to put a little touch of that tone right in there because you see that tone right there, so there it is, right there. And we'll tap a few other little bits of that through the water. There we go. Let's just grab some other little contrasting tones here. Maybe there's other bushes and stuff here. We were gonna. The other thing that you can add if you have room is like a cast shadow. You know, maybe there's a cast shadow here, right down in here, coming lights. You know, coming from the the left, upper left here. So maybe this tree is giving a nice cast shadow there. You know, down onto this little bit of a hillside. Let's just angle this slightly like this, and it'll make it a little bit of a hill here. So, just pull a little bit of an angle like that, and we'll get some interest so that's at a bit of a hill. Like that. Like I say, sometimes I'll tap the knife a bit so I don't get just one big long line. I'll break, I'll still use it, but I'll break it up like that. And I'll still, you know, pull at that angle, but I'll break it up a bit. Just tap and move it at that angle. There we go. And you can make all kinds of little bushes and stuff like that here. You want to build those some of the the front areas. You're like right in here, I'll put more stuff going on. But I want some variations. It's some of these yellows, greens. Model some of that color around there. 
I just like this towel. I just go whoop, whoop, get rid of that extra. And if we get too much, just take a little dark color and push it out here and there. Get that nice burnt sienna brownish color. I need to get some of that burnt sienna and that, that uh, diox is so pretty. Back in here is a deep color here. So pretty, it's deep, deep, deep colors. Just build those. Build this just a bit more. So I definitely have some nice variation coming in this ground here. Nice little shadowy bit there. You know, we can give it a little bit of light. But I, I paint back and forth like this until I start to see what I want. And and um, I try to get a, a lot of different tones in there. A lot of these different tones happening into this ground. Especially up here in the front, because there's just a lot going on here. We want some nice deep shoreline shadows here. Maybe a bit of that blue sky, deep shadow, a little purple in it. There. Because we want to cool this, and I got all this, and I drag that light down just a bit far because I want to cool this whole front a bit more. I wanted to put the front in a little more shadow like I did on a lot of the paintings in the book. So I'm just going to cool this down here. Push that color in. See, I can do this at any time. This is the beautiful thing about you're painting with the globals like this and the water. And if something is dry, just moisten it up again and uh, get some of that get some of that other color in there. purple and that blue nice cool tone that just a bit I like that powerful more powerful blue here nice cool color right up into the front see that really creates that shadow let's get that warm color right over here from that shoreline and that pulling together and see we've got to make sure we always see a little bit of that purple and green here from that that guy right in there so you see that reflection down there but some of these warmer colors yellows greens burnt siennas some of those colors Let's push a little bit of those in see a little bit of those Nice purples there though. Let's pull that right out. That creates a little more shadow to that. Then we can do that water thing again. There, but look at that. Look at how much deeper that makes this and how much more beautiful and deep this this uh painting starts to become here. So I get this nice deep purpley dark. Uh, color right up in here into the front uh, creates a lot more contrast of tone here. Nice deep cool color here up into the front. I'll let it warm up a bit here. Take a bit of that to the back. Just drag that back and forth across there like that. That's great, and that will allow you to, uh, you know, if you wanted, you could touch a few other little bits of this purple green into a few things back out in here. 
Maybe there's a big old tree right out here, though. You know, that's, uh, there, that just puts that in there softly. There. Let's get a little bit of that lighter color. Just pull down a bit and across. You could also use the knife like I showed you. You can also use the brush like this and create that look also like that. So that's coming through. There like that. It's moving through that water. Isn't that kind of pretty? There. That blue just really helps a lot. Let's get a bit of that cooler purpley blue back up over here as that shadow. Right back in there. But ultimately I want uh, a lot of this light right up here as well, sitting right up front of that. Because I want this is this is in the light. So this is in the light right here. This is where you could spend a lot of time, but you know, with these quick compositions, your idea is to put on some nice movement, get some nice stuff going on as as quickly as possible. And if you're going to try some plain air paintings and stuff, they usually the plain air artists say you try to do something within two hours. So we're just a, a hair over an hour here. You try to you try to capture the tones and stuff within two hours and everything because your light changes. And so, you know, that's part of the purpose of, you know, running quick compositions like this, just practicing and practicing the technique so you can go out in any kind of situation with your painting and paint fast. Um, and, you know, sometimes you, you do like this and you make what we call study paintings that you turn around and, and you go back into the studio. You're just making color statements and you go back into the studio and you make more refined paintings. Uh, in the studio, we call studio paintings. You know, so you do both. I do both. Um, but uh, I don't. I I don't care to paint outside a lot. I'd rather go take a bunch, a whole bunch of pictures digitally and do it that way. Uh, you know, it's just uh, the outside is. I, I love the outside and stuff but usually when if I'm outside I usually have my camera or fishing pole you know I don't always have my painting supplies there but it is fun to be out in that and see that and see the true colors and and everything there so there that puts that up there like that just kind of grab that move that through now you can put rocks in there and all kinds of stuff you know, you can do all all kinds of things. Here, let's move some of this blue, this blue and green together here. A little darker, cooler. Here, just run some of that through this area. Run some of that into this tree, and that will create a better harmony of our colors as they. Your eye starts to see some of those colors over here as well. There, like that. And um, we want to do some softer, more toned. So it goes further back. More of our tree back here. We can even lighten that green, a little different, that bluey green. Here, a little different tone here. Lighten some of that back up here. Let some of those sky holes show through. Give it a little different tree back there. Let's get a little uh, different color into it. Maybe some yellow and some burnt sienna. Those yellows in there, just vary that up. You can put touches of light. Uh, some artists will put touches of, 
you know, lights and blues and stuff like that into the painting, that sky color. See, that just adds a lot. You just go boom. So you just take some of that sky color here. That's a little too blue. Just soften that around. You can get all these colors on this, just fantastic. You can just push them around really easy and nice. Here, let's get a little bit of yellow into that. So you can add some of those around here and there. That just, <clears throat> again, puts a, a lighter tone on that. That helps quite a bit. That's a bit blue there, so I'm just going to take a little yellow right through it. There. And I, you know, when you paint fast like this, I'm not, I'm just making suggested trees. I'm not getting too wrapped up into the the tree itself. Just making some suggestive trees. Now let's go back to that lighter blue just softly. Just little touches of it. There. Like that. That's pretty good. Just create uh, edges of the tree, and again, you can, uh, you know, you can put out, and like I said, you can restate and re-put in your your lights and stuff like that. But look at what uh, we'll just hide some of that there. And like I say, I set things in two, three times, you know, several times into the painting. I'll set stuff in and. And uh, rework it and do it again and, you know, move little edges like this and, you know, they, uh, tree trunks and stuff add so much and, and I used to be so particular about it. Now, when I do quick paintings like this, I do it just kind of fast and suggestive and I think they look better, <laughs> you know, than spending all that time, you know, into it. So... You know, but everybody's a little different, what they like and not. Now we'll just add a little shoreline interest here by some taps and some colors, some different colors coming through here. You can do rocks. You know, a lot of times and then I'll do rocks and all kinds of things like that, you know. Um, all kinds of things. To just a little bit of that sky color it gives that nice atmospherics some of that Hansa yellow and that uh, burnt sienna makes a little different kind of yellow orangier brighter and nice for right up in here into the as you're coming up in here into the front of stuff you know you want to uh Give just some impressions and stuff. Have some stuff there. And uh, some impressions of some greens. Here. Whatever you want to do with yours and push that, uh, let's push that water over a bit here, this land over a bit again. Creeps out there every once in a while. More so what I want. See how easy that is to take that out and push that back in there. And always make sure you find some of those colors pulled down into that water. Set some of those colors in as a reflection and it should be Technically, it should be a, a little bit darker. That doesn't always happen, but most of the time, that's that way. And so we just make sure that we see some of those in there, those colors that gives you nice. And then uh, 
back and forth and that shoreline here some of that shoreline that I'm developing here like I say that's and <clears throat> sometimes I have to do this three four five six times is I'll just pull down into that like that and that sets that shoreline in there and then we just blur that out just a bit okay so that sets that shoreline color back in there now I'll just use my lights and stuff and just cut that that edge sometimes I do it with dark like a little shadow sometimes I do that with dark you know watery uh, color for shadow against the water sometimes I use a light line it all depends sometimes I do both the light and the dark creating light and dark situations here some nice burnt sienna in there there like that yes it creates some a little bit of light here and there like that Just a, it's a little bit of a line, but uh, it doesn't bother me too much. But it is a little bit of a line. Let's take some of that out. Vary the shoreline a bit. So I just don't always like to have a straight shoreline. I like it to be varied slightly. different stuff sometimes I put in grasses and bushes and and stuff into that and and um, maybe I'll do that today we'll put in just a little bit of grasses and stuff here but vary that shoreline undulate it there that gives more interest to it Underneath your colors, let your colors change here, like that. Grab this like a smaller flat. Pull down, pull across there. This sets that really nice reflection and little uh, light touches little edges of your brush sometimes I do a palette knife there and uh, take some white and some of your blue sky color here and just hit a few edges a few areas there puts the, the light of the water on there There's some nice light green little touches here. Again, just differences. Many times, many colors here like this. That's what gives it the differences. And it's that extra little work that makes it really a nice painting here. Let's get some of those colors in there. And <clears throat> we'll make sure we see some nice, get a little blue and burnt sienna here. And nice little angle coming down on the shoreline here as it's heading to the shadow. Then it'll get a little bit lighter here. We'll just get a little bit lighter here as we go to the back. Vary it a little bit. There. And maybe a bit lighter yet. You get that nice light reflected color when it's all the way into the back. A 
all depends on how much depth you want to have to your painting and the exact colors and stuff but yeah we'll let that go there that's pretty nice let's add a little bit of a more of a rocky shoreline there Just break up some of that solid little bit of light there. Just break it up a bit. There. And that's just deciding just how much you want to do. And I don't think I'm going to do too much more to this painting. I'll let that sit like that. But um, I think that'll... Now, to, if you want to do um, little, I have a whole bunch of them. Let me reach over here and grab one of these. I get these little things, and you can get them anywhere, you know, at any of your, uh, it's their little pastry brushes, but you can use any kind of Chinese bristle brushes. And I'll pull out the edges of them like this. And these are, they're cheap. They're just a buck or two. And, uh, and I'll pull out the edges like this and fan it out like that. And that's when I'll, and then I'll push back into the pick up some of this light color. Now some of this is already pretty light in here, but this is what I use to start making little grass strokes here, up and down like this. Did it just? It'll just break up some of the that edges of the grass. And so I use these a lot in a lot of the landscapes that I do. Um, and I'll do grasses quite a bit, and then I'll come back in and and push some of the grasses out of the way with um, my color. So I'll set some of it back in here like this and then take a little bit of that grass. Just leave that, that grass stroke in there just for it's a different type of stroke which means it adds a lot of interest to it. But then I'll take some of it out, leave some of the grasses in, take some of it out here and get a, a you know a different uh, look to it here. Sometimes I'll, I'll put the color on and then just tap through it like that. And that gives you these grasses. See that? Let me come up real close so you can see that up even better. So you put the color on like that. And then you just tap it with that. So we'll grab a light color like this. Just tap it right in there like that. Then just come in and hit the edges of that like that. And that'll push it into some grass, the look of some grass and stuff. Here. Quick and easy grass. So we can add a few like little lights like that. So you can put it on with it, or you can hit it with the, the put it on like that and hit it with the edges of your brush. Like that and get that in. And again, I, I always like to, after I do that, I always like to set some of it down and take some of it out here and there with some strokes like this that just kind of work the two together so you get a little bit more interest, shoreline interest there. See, we'll take a little more dark. In the front shoreline here you can have light and dark contrast here. Maybe hit the edges of that just a bit. You can you know, if you want to do some grasses like that, you can scratch the edges like this. A lot of scratching, especially on fast paintings like this. Or you can use, a, I've shown the liner brush. I've shown all kinds of stuff, you know, through uh, through many, many DVDs on this. On some of the different techniques that I use to create some of the different looks. But there's a lot of them. And, and But I usually have, you know, I'll usually finish up something with a, a few little grasses and stuff like that. Grass strokes. Pull this out a bit. You know, just uh, and pushing up with it is is great. Just see how it takes that that uh, the thickness of that away, and uh, so that just does it that way as well. Or you can drag through it. And grab some of the light like this and grab some light grasses through and push up sometimes and pull down sometimes. And that gives you different uh, 
different colors, different types, different uh, different angles here, because grasses just don't all grow one way. They grow all kinds of ways here. So we'll soften some of that in. Soften some of that in. So I just after I push that in, I always soften some of it in here, so I get a, a different types of textures in that. I like those and different colors back and forth and working those colors several times here. There, get those. I like that burnt sienna in that. Uh, for some reason, I really like that today. Really like that color. Especially, I guess it maybe it's because of all this blue that's here with this. They're nice compliments. Ooh, got a nice uh, grass stroke of the hair of that brush. There we go. Just a few little touches. And like that, just it just works great just to have a little bit of those and just, you know, you might hit a few of them right up in here in the front, which is great. Just blur it in and then it looks like it's all part of that uh, that whole thing. But, um, you know, the big thing is 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 you get lots of, of tonal and color variation right up into this area here. This is your front of your painting. And that's what you want, all this. And it, you get the best look, I think, by just going like that and just letting that just kind of sit out there like that. And some people don't, some people have a hard time doing that because it, it is so dang casual. But uh, I like it like that. And, uh, and you know, you kind of let what happens happen. You can change anything. Like I can wipe my brush like this and just pull back like this and take out some of that. So, I mean, anything can be changed. If you thought that's too much, you could take it right out. That's the that's the um, the beauty of these types of techniques and stuff. But this is what I go through, and then in um, in the book and stuff, when I when I go into the the actual book, you'll see me paint water. You'll see me this. You'll see where I you know I use a lot of those removal techniques. I use a lot of the you know painting of a rock or something like that. Well, let's just do. Let's do a little rock here to you for you right here. And so, if you haven't watched the the rock and and um, uh, you know rocks and water videos and stuff, this is and you're just going to the quick landscapes here. You really should take a look at those. I'm, I'm going to take some some black with some burnt siennas here. I usually use a medium gray color. Rocks have three planes here, so <clears throat> we'll just take some of our colors we're using here. We'll gray it up. Let's just put some rocks right here. Okay, some nice gray colors in there go in there first. Maybe a rock right over here. Something about rocks that are just great. Maybe a rock back here. Now I'm adding rocks everywhere. And the next thing you do is you take some darker tone here. Let's take some black, maybe some burnt sienna, and uh, maybe a touch of our blues. A darker tone. And you paint the shadowing plane. You have three planes. The light struck plane, the shadow plane, and the receding plane. So usually away from the light, you'll have some kind of shadowing plane there. Okay, since the light's coming this way, that's where it's, this is where our shadowing plane. And I can use it to break up the rock. There, we can break up that rock here. Like that. Okay. Set in some ideas of some rocks. Here, there we go, like that. Maybe we'll set another rock right up here. Okay, so you set those in. There goes some of your rocks. Okay, and uh, you know, if you have some of them, it's it's kind of nice. Maybe put one right down in here by the water as well. 
So it just doesn't stop at the water. Maybe this little rock and stuff here, right here, goes into the water. There, then that that adds you know more visual interest uh, for your painting as well. So <clears throat> then you have a light struck plane and a receding plane, and you can do any of the planes at the at any time. Uh, let's put in a light struck plane. So the light struck plane would be a plane that my light's coming in this way. It's going to be the plane that the 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 light is going to strike on the rock here. So maybe that plane right there gets struck on that rock right there. Strikes. And vary this color, sometimes a little yellows and stuff into it. And, you know, right here we're going to have some of our rocks out into our water. There's the light struck planes. Maybe there's another little rock right there. Okay. So you see you can add rocks really quick. Here. So now you have the shadow plane, the light struck plane, and then you're going to go right between the two with the medium value here, which is the receding plane, and it'll be the plane, and I'll pull down at the angle, like here, or here you can push up to get a little different look to it, here, but I'll pull down at the angle here, heading towards the shadow plane, from the light to the shadow plane there, I'll just set in a a little bit of an angle with a color that's right between the light and the shadow. So here we'll set that in. And then I'll go back and work the planes again. So let's go back. Maybe a little burnt sienna and a little black here. Work that plane again. Work that one again. A little bit of burnt sienna in it comes out this time. That's beautiful. Um, you can start to divide your rocks up into smaller planes. So you'll see that in a lot. If you'd like, if you'd like to try that, I suggest you try that. I just did a seascape one also that has had a lot of rocks in it. And uh, they're really kind of fun. You just see them in the three planes. Yeah. You can add just little touches of them. Maybe there's other little things of rocks and stuff going on here on this shoreline there. Rocks just add a lot. We can um, take a little bit of our light color. Maybe that water hits the edge of the rock there. Maybe that goes right up to that edge right there. I see some different <clears throat> angles there and uh, add some more lights and some more darks work them a couple times here and add some different planes you can hit and remove you know I'll touch it and then I'll wipe my brush and remove off a little bit these are small so you really can't do a whole bunch of stuff with them but uh, some of my other paintings, I do quite large rocks, and uh, I'll get them quite detailed, multiple planes, and little cracks and fractures in them, and, and everything. There we go. That's just a quick little way to, to see and get some rocks in your painting. And this is what I do, uh, how I do them into the... Uh, into the book, but I, uh, of course, will put maybe a little more work into um, a few of them. It is, and you'll see that in step photos and stuff like that. But you can add different angles, and you can break them up uh, some different ways. And, you know, the viewer will see what they want to see. That's the beautiful thing about it, too. So I can just tap in a little bit of color into here and then a little shadow plane into to some of this and the viewers will start seeing, okay, there's a little, you know, a little bit of rocks going on in there. And take some of the color and soften those in together. So you don't need to be um, super precise 
we'll see what they uh, what they want to see and where they're going to see here. They will, their eye will do it. And that's what the, the hardest thing was for me um, when I was paid, you know, starting to do a lot of these landscape and still is the hard thing for me is to, to leave something alone thinking that I have to paint it absolutely perfectly. And you really don't because the viewer's eye is going to do that. You know, you it's suggested, but you've got to do is just suggest. And if you can get out of there without making it too precise, the viewer will actually see it better. And, you know, that's where Impressionism all came, really came from, that knowledge that started, is that you start getting stuff in there impressionistically and, um, you know, how much of an impression do you give and the viewer can see it and see the shape. And so... And there's all kinds of rules, you know, that, that artists have created over the years for Impressionism. But, you know, you you don't want to create the perfect shape. You want just enough so that the viewer knows what it is. And here, by having a... And it's like when I paint flowers. Some flowers, I'll paint just a couple of really beautiful flowers. And then the rest of the flowers are all just touches of color. And the viewer will see it all and their eye will relax and it becomes beautiful because I didn't paint everything exactly perfect, you see? And so here, by you know, you can put in a couple of rocks and a couple angles of rocks and stuff and it'll look like rocks and maybe we'll add just a couple of little touches back here. So it just has to be colors of it back in through here. And, you know, someone's going to say, oh, okay, there's some little rocks back there. And uh, because of, you know, how I have everything going here with this here, um, you know, they, they'll they see, okay, that, that looks like a bunch of rocks right up there into the front of this. And, you know, rocks just add a lot of interest. And, you know, you can go crazy with rocks. You can add more rocks. <laughs> I can have some more rocks right out back out through here, maybe a couple of smaller ones. And, uh, you know, try to get, try not to have them in too much of a pattern. But put on a little shadow, put on a little bit of your light struck plane here. Let's put on a light struck plane. And then you just come in with a receding plane. And then if you want, the receding plane is a color right between the two. And maybe a little burnt um, uh, sienna into that. And uh, push those in. And then you can push a little um, light water around it. If you want to just say they're just a little light water hitting the edges of those right through there like that maybe water's coming down and whispering that let's put a little light blue water right down through here maybe some of that's dancing right around the the rocks there and we've done this whole thing in just a little over an hour and a half so we hit our goal we have under two hours done this whole painting in uh, just a little bit over an hour and a half and we'll just drag a bit of this there so we hit our goal and so these are some of the techniques I use and of course we'll use more you know later on and everything but there's a, some of the quick techniques that I use especially in the in and to um, the quick uh, landscape books, and that we're uh, that we're working on, and we'll just add a last couple little. I like that bit of blue, that bit of shine, that nice little bit, just dragging just gently across that water there. And of course, like I said, any time you get too much or something like that, you just. Um, just wipe your brush and paint it back out. It'll come right back out. So you just wipe your brush and see, just lift it like that and it comes right off. So you can lift it right off if you get too much of it. There. Last little bit and then I am done playing with this. You could play with these for so long. They're so fun. But, you know, they're just, they're supposed to be fun little paintings that you do. You're not supposed to make them into masterpieces here. They're just fun little paintings. Here, here we go. 
just takes that along. Let's just take just a bit of that out. Here we go. That 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 movement of that light color just looks excellent against that real dark blue purple that we put down here into the front. So that just gives a nice nice bit of light and look to it here. Let's just give a bit of light right there. There we go, right into those rocks. There. Take just a bit of that out. There. That looks good. I think that is... We'll step back just a bit. You can see the whole feeling of that. Yeah, boy, I tell you, rocks just are great. <laughs> okay. Hope you enjoyed it. I had a great time painting with you. Look for more of our uh, DVDs. And if you haven't checked out the Rocks and Water video series, you ought to do that because I spend a lot of time in there with the three planes of the rocks and show you how to warm and cool and then break up the planes into other planes. Um, I show you how to paint some of the mountains and stuff and visualize things in planes, which is what we do. And then it lets you go painting little rocks like this real fast, okay? Thanks very much for joining me. I'll see you on some of my other videos. And as always, if you have any kind of questions or anything, don't be afraid to write me. And you can come visit us on all of our Facebook pages, too. We'd love to see you over there. Okay, Till next time, you take care. Have fun with some of your painting. And I'll see you next time. Bye.